Hey guys, welcome back to the Fat Man Little Trail, the podcast, the podcast where everyone is uh, invited on the trail. Um, I hope we have a great episode for you. I know we're going to, and if you do, make sure you like and share it on, on, on your podcast platforms. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook for all the updates. And if you want to support the podcast, check out the uh, link in my bio. I want to get right into the Chewing the Fat segment uh, that I'm calling it this week. I have a great guest with me. My guest is one of the most inspiring people that you will ever meet. Damian Jellens is the man behind Legend Life After 40. Dot com. He is a health and fitness advocate, entrepreneur, author now, experiencer of life, and he's here to talk with us. Damien, welcome. Thank you, Greg. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Well, judging by that accent, I can tell you are definitely from Chicago. <laughs> a little bit off there, like uh, actually the other side of the world. I'm a New Zealander. Okay, so you grew up in New Zealand. Were you always like an active um, athlete, athlete type person and all that stuff growing up in New Zealand? Uh, pretty much after age of 13, actually up to 13, I was overweight, kind of like uh, someone who was made fun of for being a fat guy. So I kind of like decided to change all of that and then actually made my first appearance in a gym when I was about 13. It was actually called a health studio back then because it's quite a while back then. Um, and then kind of found my way into rugby and then that kind of like set me off on a completely different direction. And then, yes, from there, I've kind of always been into different sports, different activities, and then obviously trying to keep fit. Was it mostly doing like organized sports and going to the gym or were you, were you an outside type of person? What, what was it growing up uh, that kind of, kind of got you to this point? Well, well, rugby took up quite a bit of my time. Um, so that was during winter time. Then summertime, I also did surf lifesaving. So um, where I rode surf boats and, you know, a range of different other kind of activities with the surf club. Um, but also biking. I used to, Head up, and we had had in the back of Canterbury an area called the Port Hills, and then most weekends you'd find me up there going for a bike route, bike ride. So yeah, it's always kind of been outdoorsy um, with some kind of organised sport. Um, but that kind of ended it about when I was 26, 27, broke my arm playing rugby, and then kind of changed direction to kind of focus on my career, but kept up the kind of like you know, going to the gym, bike riding, going off mountain biking, hiking whenever I can. You, you mentioned that at 13, you, you is when you had that change in your life. Is there something that kind of hit you at 13? Was it you were getting picked on or you just decided, hey, enough is enough and you want to work out? Yeah, like pretty much it was, you know, you know how kids are when you're kind of overweight, they kind of like uh, poke a lot of fun at you. And then I kind of like decided, and I didn't want to be made fun of anymore like you know I was a, a bigger guy obviously very solid and then um, decided I want to kind of like change things I didn't want to be kind of like you know the butt of anyone's kind of humor um, so, so as I mentioned went to the gym um, or the studio and it, I kind of lasted three months because I was like the youngest person in there by a long long shot so I was kind of like a little bit embarrassed and then so I ended up Back then, wider was kind of like a big thing. So I had some part-time jobs. So I bought all the weightlifting kind of stuff and started training at home. And then I think it was about 15 when I got back into the gym again, because then I had other sports. I was like playing a little bit of basketball and then I was slowly getting into rugby. I did it the complete opposite. I was skinny as a kid and now I've gained weight as an adult. And we'll talk about that in a little <laughs> okay. bit. I gotta, I gotta ask. I mean, you look great. Are you actually over fifty years old? Is this true? That's correct. I'm fifty-one as of uh, February this year. So next year I'll be hitting fifty-two. Uh, I feel bad about myself already. So that transitions perfectly, though, into legendlifeafter40.com. This is the website that that you started. This website, correct? Correct. And 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 tell me a little bit about Legend Life, and tell the, the listeners a little bit about what Legend Life After 40 is? Uh, Legend Life After 40 is meant to be a destination for people approaching over 40. Um, a, a place where you can kind of like get inspiration and information to kind of help you live your best life after 40. Um, what I found when I reached 40, there was a lot of 
misinformation, um, societal biases, and even even the people I was kind of like hanging out with, they were all kind of talking about 40 being something kind of like negative, like something um, you had, it was like a trauma. Oh my God, I'm going to turn 40. It's all downhill from here. It's game over. You know, get ready for retirement. We're going to get sick, die, you know, all of this kind of carry on. I was going, my God, like that's pretty depressing. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of things I want to do. So I was going, actually, I don't buy into this. And I, I can't be the only guy out there who doesn't buy into it. So kind of like wanted to meet other kind of like people. So I went off and did a bunch of kind of like research and found all these people doing pretty amazing stuff after 40, a lot even starting when they hit 40. So I thought, you know, it would be good to have a platform where I could share all of these stories and then also try to connect with interesting people. You know, when we get 40, it gets really hard to kind of like meet other people because we've got a lot of conflicting interests. Like I'm a single father, I've got a 10 year old boy, got a business. So, you know, when do you find time to kind of like meet other people like yourself? So I was going, it'd be great to have a platform where you could meet other people, also get some inspiration for those who aren't, um, you know, able to kind of like see the possibilities of that 40 is not downhill. It's actually the beginning uh, of living your best life. Um, so then I came up with the kind of like website and then also a Facebook group behind it. And would you say that you're, you're in better shape now as you're getting into your 40s and 50s? Or are you looking for people that are in great shape for the website? Or is it kind of for everybody that's out there? It's for everyone. Uh, for myself personally, like, I'm in reasonable shape. Like, I won't say I'm in the best shape because obviously I, you know, I train every day and, and active, but I don't have a sport and I'm not trying to really achieve anything except try to keep myself in pretty good nick. Um, but obviously I have the niggles like uh, from getting older, playing competitive sports, you know, cartilage kind of issues, mm. shoulder issues and all of that. But, you know, obviously that's life like you know if you've lived an active life you're going to go and experience these kind of things so as far as after 40 it's meant to be for everyone like it doesn't matter what shape size or anything else it's all about um you having a place where you can come where you kind of like get to connect with like-minded people who want to have experiences you can get some inspiration to kind of change your perception of you know what society says is you know once you reach a certain age it's kind of like difficult for you to do anything else after that particular age. Like society says, if you aren't successful, it's kind of like by age X, it's kind of game over. Or, you know, over 50, you're going to get some kind of like major disease, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of negativity yeah. kind of like out there. And I kind of want to dispel all of that to kind of like say, you know, that's not necessarily true. Um, it's kind of like a choice you make, it, the kind of life you kind of lead, um, how you approach living, that's going to determine what your life is actually going to be like later on in life. And then some of the stories of, of people I've kind of like had the opportunity to meet, a lot of them started their transformation and living their best life when they were 40 or even 50. So our age is definitely not a limitation. You know, 20 and 30, you don't know anything. 40, you've got a lot of experience um, behind you. Um, and hopefully you're not kind of like con feeling constrained. Like, you know, when we're 20 or 30, we're all worried about what everyone else is kind of like thinking. We have to accept societal norms. We've got to follow everyone else. When we're 40, we should make a decision that's all rubbish. We don't have to kind of like take, you know, worry about anyone else or what society thinks. It's time now for us to kind of start worrying about what's important to us because, you know, we don't get a second run at this. So later on, you know, if we don't live the life we're kind of like uh, wanting to live for ourselves, we, we don't get another opportunity. So now in the 40s is the best time to kind of like really kind of try to be authentic about how we live our lives. And that's exactly how I ran into you was on was through, uh, I think it was Instagram where we actually connected for the first time. And and I didn't get started until I was 40. You know, I was I was an athlete growing up. And then I was a, you know, 
kind of workaholic where I just work nonstop, nonstop. And then I'd go to the gym for three months in a row and be like, Oh, I'm in great shape. And then I'd stop and I'd eat 30 pizzas and be like, I'm not in great <laughs> shape anymore. You know, you know, and it's hard because you're working, you've got other obligations in life and, and it comes at you fast. And then when I got to 40 is when I kind of said, you know what, I'm going to go outside. I was embarrassed to go outside. And I think that's one thing that your kind of site shows people is that even if you're embarrassed and you don't, you know, I didn't want to go hike in Colorado because everyone's in such great shape out here. But then I did it once and I was like, wait, I can do this too. You know, and I started slower and I moved slower. And I think that's kind of what you say with your site is like-minded people coming together to find, you know, equal ground where we can all kind of inspire each other and things like that, which is, which is wonderful. So I don't know if you want to respond to that, but I just wanted to throw it out there. No, no, definitely agree with you. Uh, you know, it's all about an attitude of life. I mean, you know, like one of the people I interviewed started ultra running when he was like 40 years old. He was like a couch potato and one day decided I've had enough of this, ran around a block in a pair of jeans and then has gone on to now be a sponsored kind of athlete. So, you know, anyone can start. I mean, that's the whole kind of like premise behind Legion Life After 40 and in something I call ageless living, it's never too late to start. You know, the only time it's too late to start is when, you know, our life is over. So it doesn't matter when you start, you just got to make a decision to kind of like start and then go off and do the things you want to do. You know, as you said, life does get busy. Like I've been a workaholic much of my time as well. And then being a single father, like I have limited time, but I've made, I make a decision that I want to do these kind of things. So I get up at four o'clock in the morning to go off and do the things I, I need to do before my son wakes up, get him ready for school and then, you know, work around that. So, you know, anyone can do it. Like, you know, you just got to make the choice. And then, you know, you're a perfect example. You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're happier for it, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's mentally and physically, I'm in, you know, great, a great place right now. And it's because I, I decided one day just, Hey, I'm going to do this now, you know, and then I, I went out and found resources. And that's one thing that your website has a lot of is there's a lot of good resources on there for people that are trying to get started, aren't there? Not just, you know, runners or hikers, you kind of do the broad spectrum, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Because, you know, I'm not focused on a particular activity. I like a whole range of different things. And then, um, you know, there are people, you know, who come to the site and then share their kind of photos, et cetera, who are specifically hikers or they're specifically people who are bikers or some kind of other activity. What you do is kind of like irrelevant. So, you know, you just choose what kind of resonates with you. I like to do a whole range of different activities because I am I truly have the monkey brain. So I, I get distracted and want to try different things all the time. And so I wanted to create an environment which would cater for a person like myself and then cater for a person like yourself who maybe is very, you know, really loves hiking, you know. So it doesn't really matter. It's meant to be for everyone. That's great. That leads me kind of to your, let's get into your book here for a little bit because that kind of comes right off of that, that um, legend life after 40 uh, mindset. Tell me what, what inspired you to write this book? Well, basically I wanted to kind of put in one place, all my kind of ideas and kind of like concepts. So over, over the period of time I, I had legend life after 40, I'd connected with people like yourself, built a little bit of a Facebook group, had people on Instagram, etc. But I didn't think people really kind of understood what I was trying to achieve. I think a lot of people were going, hey, look, this guy's all about getting us to have adventures, travel, and all of that kind of stuff, which was true. I really kind of like believe that's an important element of our lives. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about other facets of our life, you know, like the whole concept of aging and then really maximizing how we live our lives, you know, from 40 and beyond. So I wanted to kind of like distill it all down, my kind of like concept, my kind of principles, and then I put together the book to kind of be uh, a, a resource that I could share with people so they could kind of understand where I was going and then try to get people on board. Because as I mentioned earlier, I feel society kind of really constrains us. 
limits us. It, it talks very negatively about us when we get in our 40s and 50s. You know, the idea when you hit 70 and they, you know, you have these kind of like reserved spaces for us. Like, I don't <laughs> want to be anyone treating me any different than um, I, you know, when I reach 70, I want to be treated like you know, an active contributor to society. And the idea that I finish my contribution to society when I'm 65 seems completely ridiculous. Um, you know, I hope to contribute to society until the day I'm no longer able to contribute to society. Um, I want to be active, um, doing things, trying to, in my own way, kind of making a difference. So, you know, I, I want a bunch of other people to kind of like get on board and say, you know, all of these limited society kind of like creates a complete rubbish. Like, you know, and the only way we're going to do it, it's not the like to complain about it is actually kind of like shift how we all approach life and, you know we as a group over 40 are a very large percentage of society in western society it doesn't matter if you're in the us australia we represent a very big chunk of you know humankind mm -hmm. um and then a lot of us are kind of like waiting to retire you know and then i'm going well you know I, I don't think that's a good deal. I think that's kind of like waiting to die because, you know, we we as a, as a species are meant to keep on growing, developing, trying to, you know, change, evolve, all of these kind of things. And the moment we stop doing that, we stop, we start regressing. And that's when we actually become old. You know, from my perspective, we need to be active, like physically active, mentally active throughout our lives. And that's when we don't really decline. Also, you know, I believe our particular segment of society has contributed to a lot of the, the issues we currently face. And then we have the potential and the mental capacity to also kind of like change that. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we change the kind of the way we approach life, if we physically active, we can also be more mentally active. And then if we don't take the attitude that, you know, over a particular age, that's when we need to slow down. I think we can go off and actually address some of the kind of issues we have. That's very well said, sir. <laughs> I, you know, you don't think about it, but it is, it's kind of like the, the goal of, of society nowadays is to retire and then just sit on a, a barca lounger and watch television and eat popcorn. Like that's kind of how it's set up work until you can't work anymore. And then just relax. Well, why, why not be more active? And that's, that's a wonderful, um, philosophy that you have there of trying to keep people active and how mental you stay active mentally when you stay active physically. I really like Correct. That. So one thing in the book that I really enjoyed was you had some aging myths in there and you, you dispelled some aging myths. And I was wondering if you could dispel some of them for us here. We won't give them all to you because we want people to go out and get this book because it's a great book, but I just wanted to go over a couple of them with you, if that's okay. Okay. All right. Number one, uh, getting older means you have missed your chance. It's done. You have to stop because you should have done that while you were younger. Uh, well, I can't remember the answer offhand, but you know, sure. pretty much, you know, you no, know, pretty much for me, that's a load of rubbish. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I'm definitely believe I've got plenty of opportunity to make some kind of a difference. So, you know, it's never over. Like, you know, when people kind of t say to me, you know, you're too old, you know, it's like, well, you know, who, who are you to kind of like define how old I am or what's too old? I mean, like, I, I've got, I'm like 51, but I certainly don't feel like I'm 51. I mean, my age is irrelevant. I don't even think about my age. When I, whatever I do, I always go, I couldn't care if you're 20 or 30, I'm always trying to beat you in the gym or try to beat you on the bike or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to see how far I can go. What's my potential? And a great example was, was what you said earlier about that ultra runner who started at what 42 you said, and he started ultra running and, you know, he didn't miss his chance. He's still going. So that was, that was a perfect example of that. Um, getting older, mean, this is number three, getting older means physical deterioration is inevitable. It's definitely not. Well, it would be pretty depressing if, like, basically that was kind of my outlook because then you're pretty much like, as you said, sit on the on the couch and have popcorn, wouldn't you? Because, like, you know, there's no point of doing it because you're guaranteed you're going to go like fall apart. 
and then back to the ultra run i mean he he actually like had a heart problem he was you know basically you know a medical disaster kind of like waiting to happen not because he was older because of the lifestyle choices he made so by changing his lifestyle choices he's now a very healthy kind of guy much fitter than a lot of 20 and 30 year olds so you know physical deterioration is definitely not something to kind of like be worried about it's it's, a, it's it's up to you to take responsibility for your life and then make the right kind of choices and a lot of that happens because we are not using those muscles we're not using those joints we're just letting everything stiffen up so you know it's kind of like a car if you don't drive it it's going to start to have problems right yeah. All right. Number four, uh, getting older means increasing pain, suffering, and inflexibility. Kind of on the same lines there. Is that a myth? Yep. No, definitely a myth. I mean, you know, obviously we have some challenges um, because our life, you know, during life, as I said, like I, I face some kind of like challenges through some pop shoulders, knee surgery, and all the rest of it. But you know, we can kind of like uh, address all of that, you know, by kind of like lifestyle choices still. I mean, certainly, you know, it's not inevitable. I mean, there's, you know, even some of the people on our website are like yoga people. And if you, you see some of the ladies are doing, doing the stuff they're doing, I mean, they're in their 40s and 50s, they're certainly not inflexible. So it's, it's once again, you got to put in the work, you know, another thing that comes across all the time, when you get an older, you need to slow down, you need to do less, I'm on the reverse, you need to do more, you know, you need to work harder to address the things that you didn't do when you were in your 20s and 30s. So you got to do the standard, like keep fit. But you got to work on your flexibility. You got to put more work in. You got to work more on um, what you eat. You got to work more. You got to actually do more when you're older if you've done nothing up to that point of time. Because basically everything is an accumulation of what has occurred before. And then you're kind of like dealing with all of that at this particular point in time. So you got to work harder to kind of address those things. Obviously, if you like some of the yoga ladies who've been doing this for, you know, 20 or 30 years, they don't have the challenges like myself and yourself, who possibly haven't really been working on our flexibility that much. We, we need to do the extra work now so that we can become more flexible. And you can, there's no you know, when you reach a certain date, you can't be flexible anymore. You can't develop aerobic capacity. You can't, you know, develop strength and get stronger and develop muscle and all of those kind of things. Sure, there's some physical things that are happening. Your body is changing, but we can kind of like compensate that because we've got this ama amazing mechanism that is developed to uh, transform, evolve based on stresses, that we, we, we give it. So we need to give it the stresses, the things that will help it evolve, you know, so then we can become better. The phrase that I love is knock the rust off. You know, like if you haven't worked yep. out for a long time or you're over 40 and you're like, okay, I haven't been to the gym in 10 years. Well, the first time you go, you're going to be sore. You know, th there's going to be things that hurt and creak and ache and stuff. But once you knock that rust off, once you get your body moving again, your body becomes fluid again it's it's one of those things that it's kind of when you don't do it and 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 you get nervous about it the first time you go or you get sore after the first time and you're like oh it's discouraging but if you power through that your body reacts and your body will recover and it's amazing even at 40 or 50 how the body can still recover and react we just don't think it will because we've been sitting on our butts for too long right no, definitely. So yeah, there's a lot of misinformation, like, uh, basically, our body keeps on changing our entire life, like our brain keeps on changing, our body keeps on changing. We just have to give it the right kind of stimulus. And the last myth, you already touched on it. So we don't even have to talk about it. But getting older means you should take it easy when exercising. No, you should take it smart, I think is kind of your message on that. You know, don't go out and run a marathon your first day off the couch. But eventually you can work yourself up to run in a marathon. You see 80 year olds and like all these great news stories of these older people running long distances or, you know, swimming the English channel and stuff at 60 and things like that. So obviously that is a myth as well. Damien, how do people get their hands on this? What was it called too? I forgot to name the title. What's the title and how do they get their hands on it? 
it's called the Aegis Living Manifesto, and they can get it by heading over to our website. So legendlifeafter40.com. Perfect. Uh, the one last thing I want to talk to you about here before we have some fun, and you kind of an offshoot of the living life after legend life after 40.com is the 52 experience challenge. And that's something that's just started up in the last, uh, it's been the last year, right? What is the 52 experience challenge? Yep, I kicked this off in April. Um, basically, it's challenged uh, everyone to have an experience, one, one experience at least every week for the next kind of like 52 weeks. It's kind of like to, meant to be an ongoing challenge. Um, it, it's something that I employed some time ago. I had a small business experience business and it kind of like, uh, it was a marketing concept that I came up with that I had all these experiences and then I would go, go off and have each of these experiences a week. Um, at the time, I was a little bit like yourself, a workaholic. Um, so I was running this business, doing another business. Um, so I was just working all the time, you know, I kept fit, but I wasn't actually having any fun. I wasn't going mm. off and having any fun. So each week I had to go off because I made this commitment to the people I was like, uh, my community, and then also the providers that I'd go off and do this to market their experiences. So, but each week, you know, I was having fun. Like it was work, but I was having fun. I was river rafting. I was like paddling or sailing and doing all these kind of things. I was actually forcing myself to have fun. And then I was going, wow, you know, I'm actually feeling a lot happier. I was getting back to the office, feeling energized and full, full of life. So then I made it something I personally would do every week. So every week, I go off and do some kind of activity. So it, it doesn't mean I go off a river rafting to do something adventurous each week. It's just that once a week, I allocate a portion of my time where I will do something different, which is pure relaxation for fun, not training, just to have some fun. So, so I'd already started the group and I was thinking, well, it's really positive kind of like feel for myself. And then I think there's a lot of people over 40 or 50 get caught, caught up in the day-to-day -day of life. They're on autopilot, you know, they've got a lot of conflicting things and they're not making enough time for themselves to enjoy themselves. So how about I create this, uh, what, you know, the experience I was having through the challenge for myself, I'd create the 52 experiences challenge and then get other people forced them to go off and have some fun one one day a week um so that's the kind of concept behind 52 experiences challenge and, and the way i understand it because i'm a, i'm an ambassador for you on the on the challenge is that you know let's say you do yoga every day you get up at four in the morning you go do yoga in your in your basement or in your studio or in your living room or however well why not do yoga on the lake you know why don't go somewhere and experience something different if you run on a treadmill all day long try a trail run or try to go run down down the city or something like that so it's not like you said you don't have to be like well i went hot air ballooning and bungee jumped out of it and because i had to have an experience you know an experience doesn't have to be huge every week it can be something that just takes you out of your comfort zone and gets you out into something that's going to be a little bit more enjoyable right is that kind of the concept yeah, no, definitely. It, it was meant to be something that anyone can do. Um, you're not, there's no like financial kind of commitment. There's no big time commitment. You don't need to travel a great distance. Um, no, you know, like you need to be an adventurer or extreme kind of athlete to be able to do it. It was meant to be any, anything anyone can do. Like for instance, in my case, I live in a huge city. I, I'm based in Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo, which is one of the biggest cities in the world. So, you know, it's 12 million people. So I'm smack dab in the middle. So like, I don't have mountains in my backdrop. I don't have the beach. I have to make a big effort to kind of go anywhere. And then you can imagine when there's a bunch of people escaping the city, you know, yeah. at the same time, you know, traffic's kind of like mayhem. So, you know, for me, it's like finding leafy neighborhoods and going for like a four hour walk. You know, I take my son, we go exploring something we haven't done before or finding a new place we haven't gone biking. You know, you know, it's simple things, but those things kind of like make a difference. They kind of like take you out of autopilot. They give you some space, which is just your space to kind of enjoy, relax and be outside. And I think it's pretty important to be outside because we spend so much time in the office. And then as you said, you know, we go to, so we go to the gym, 
in a cubicle. Then we go to the office, we're in a cubicle. We get home, we're in a box. So we, we're never outside. We're never kind of like really enjoying. And then as you know, I'm a firm believer that humans are meant to be outside. We're, we're meant to smell the sun. We're meant to see trees. You know, even if it's just a leafy neighborhood, we're meant to do something along those lines. And that's when we really feel alive. And that's when we come back kind of like recharged. And unlike some, some fitness challenges, this isn't necessarily meant for a fitness person is what I think I hear you saying is that like, even if you're just somebody who, you know, you have a very low level of fitness and you sit in an office all day long and you just need to get out and kind of experience a different life. This is kind of on that mindset, right. Of just experiencing a better life even if you take the fitness part out of it, right? Yeah, no, fitness is kind of like uh, the added benefit. It's like mm -hmm. what you're going to get from going to actually do it. It's actually more of a, a mental kind of like health kind of like thing. It, 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 there's a need for all of us to kind of like get out and do something a little bit different. We have this need for novelty and variety in our lives. So it's a way to get that, also to take us out of our comfort zone a little bit. And then the way I kind of like conceived it as well is I think a lot of families or even like friends, they, you know, they don't really do anything. They kind of like, you know, nowadays it's all WhatsApp or, you know, communicating through some kind of like social media kind of like mechanism. And I think, you know, like, as I said, I like to go for walks with my son because that mm -hmm. means I'm completely separated from everything else. And then we just have conversations. And I think that's pretty cool. And then I think a lot of families would benefit like just going off together and then enjoy connecting. And then the byproduct is you're doing something kind of active. And then even people who don't have a family, even with your friends, like real time with friends, you know, not the go to some restaurant, sit around and everyone's playing on their phone even. Right. You're not even like interacting. But, you know, when you go somewhere where you can't even use the phone, like, you know, I personally leave my phone at home. Um, and then we just talk. You just talk and I have a real kind of conversation. I think it's very important for mental health as well. So, so yeah, so it's meant to have a whole lot of kind of like uh, benefits. Um, but the primary one is just to get, get you out of the day to day. That's what I love about uh, going up into the mountains here in Colorado is that there's no cell signal at most of the places. So you can walk for four hours. You can look at your phone all you want. There's nothing on it because there's no yeah. signal coming through. So tell, tell uh, the listeners here, how do you sign up for this 52 Experience Challenge? Uh, we've got a website, 52experienceschallenge.com. Uh, so basically just head over to there. It's um, free. You get a bunch of resources to kind of like help guide you on how to have it how to have the experiences and we also have like a Facebook group where there's a bunch of people you know there's about 1800 people a lot of them are like sharing their experiences um, so great bunch of people you know they're even inspirational for me they give me a lot of ideas and what you know I wouldn't even think about doing so you know you know so it's pretty simple to sign up and it's free. And you get, you send out like a weekly inspirational uh, when you sign up for on 52 experiences, don't you? Yeah, like it's actually connected to Legion Life after 40. Okay. So I, so yeah, like I, I try to interview interesting people. Like as I mentioned, one of the objectives is to share inspirational stories, mm -hmm. um, you know, a broad range of stories. So it's not just athletes. It's a, it's a range of different people just to kind of like show you that, um, ordinary people, people just like ourselves, you know, are doing pretty exceptional things. Um, and then once again, you can do it as well. You just got to make the choice. Is there anything else that you want to talk about as far as, you know, your mission in life and, and, and your story that you want to share with the listeners before we uh, move on to some of the fun stuff? Uh, well, pretty much like, uh, I think we've discussed a lot of it, like uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, my personal mission is to kind of like inspire more and more people to believe that you shouldn't limit yourself. Like pretty much life is uh, the only, only thing that limits you in life is the decisions you make yourself. Mm -hmm. So you need to kind of make the choice whether and what kind of life you want to live. And then, you know, go off and live that kind of a life. I mean, life is too short. Um, you know, in our case, we, we know it's kind of finite when you, once you hit 50, you know, it's kind of like you get a less and less time to do kind of things. Mm -hmm. So 
definitely don't slow down, speed up, try to fill in as much as you can possibly fill in um, because we don't know when our number's up, you know, like, you know, both my parents have got Alzheimer's, one died from Alzheimer's, um, and you don't know what's coming around the corner. So you can only do what you can do, but never wait, never do what I call delayed living. Live it, live it every single day. Live every day the best you can, and then you'll end up with an exceptional life. Yeah, that's a great philosophy right there. And I'm, I'm glad even though it took me 40 years, I've kind of started to jump on that train as well. Um, it's not, you, you're ready to have a little bit of fun here. I've got a segment we're calling the buffet. It's the rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Okay. Let's All right. Question number one, do you prefer camping, glamping, or a hotel when you travel? I prefer glamping. There you go. Number two, road trip, or do you fly to your destination? I do both. Okay. And number three, what is your go-to snack when you're hiking or out doing anything? I'll take along a protein bar. Okay. Uh, what's the first thing that you eat or drink after a long workout outside? I'm, I'm a kind of boring guy. I actually will drink uh, water. <laughs> so, like. Uh. <laughs> mine's gator i have to have a gatorade waiting for me in the car because it, I mean, it's 100 degrees when i'm out hiking so i have to have something like that all right now here's the big one forest mountain or beach where would you rather be beach all righty that's the rapid fire questions um the next thing i do is i always pick a hike of the week I'm, it's a hiking uh podcast so what about you? You're in Brazil, you said, and you grew up in New Zealand. What's your favorite hike that you've ever been on? Um, you can just pick any, any hike and just kind of describe the hike to us. Sure. Um, it's actually from Brazil. Um, there's a place called Ilabella, like beautiful island, um, which is about four or five hours from Sao Paulo. And then on the south side of, or the east side of the island on the south coast, um, there's a place called Benechi. It's a little beach. Um, and so there's a trail to get to that beach. It's about 12 k's. Um, and you'll pass through rainforests. And there's about three different waterfalls. It's pretty, pretty hard going. It's, you know, not many people kind of like walk the trail. Um, so they say it takes about five hours. But normally with my friends, we try to knock it off in about four. Um, so it's an isolated kind of like fishing community, beautiful vista of this like, you know, really beautiful beach. But you, you normally people will try to find a boat, but we always make it a mission. We'll go there, we go for a bit of a bit of a swim and then we'll hike back. So it turns into about a nine hour day. So it's like pretty full on. Um, but yeah, it's like beautiful scenery. It's physically challenging. Um, you get rewarded, you know, one end by, you know, this beautiful kind of vista. And then at the end of the day, you feel like you've really kind of like had a great, uh, you know, you physically challenge yourself. But you've, you've earned that swim in the middle. That's the important part. Correct. You have to give yourself that reward at the end and then coming back down is usually easier. <laughs> so. Yes. Well, Damien, thank you so, so much for uh, talking with me today. I do appreciate it. And everybody, if you're looking to find out more on uh, legendlifeafter40.com and 52experiencechallenge.com, Damien, any, any last closing words? Oh, well, thanks for you, uh, like giving me the opportunity. Uh, and then also thank you for being an ambassador for us. I mean, you're a prime example of a person that I'm trying to kind of like connect with, um, you know, someone who isn't limited by his age, um, someone who changed, you know, at 40 made a decision that he wants to live a better kind of life. And that's pretty much kind of people I'm trying to connect with uh, via Legend Life After 40. Absolutely. It's been a great experience, uh, you know, connecting with you and, and getting all the resources. And, and I, I love those weekly emails that we get where you interview somebody. I'm still waiting for my interview, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. Uh, that's going to wrap up this week on the podcast. Um, Damien, again, thank you for joining me. If you guys have any future ideas for future podcasts, feel free to email me at fatmanlittletrails at gmail.com, all one word. Um, I do hope to see you all on the trail soon. And until then, happy hiking. <laughs>